All right, we are already on chapter four, which is the spine. It's going by fast. When we are looking at the spine, um, CT is really good for any kind of gross bony abnormality such as compression fractures. So this is a great example of a compression fracture of the T-spine. I know that because I can see the rib coming off. There's also lung filled here. So that gives me the clue that we are in the thoracic cavity. So there's CT and L, so there's 33 total in the cervical spine. There's seven bodies, thoracic 12, lumbar 5, sacrum 5, and then the coccyx, there's three to five bones depending on the person. So this uh, is a test question, and I would hate for you to get it wrong. Uh, the typical vertebral body, so you have your um, body, of uh, the vertebral body, you have your vertebral foramen. In the back, this whole area here from transverse process to transverse process is your vertebral arch. Um, in between uh, the body and the transverse process is your pedicle, and you have your lamina between your transverse process and your spinous process is your lamina to your spinous process. You can see here that this is a uh, superior articular process. So looking here, the body, here's your uh, vertebral foramen, your spinous process, your pedicle or your lamina here with your pedicle right there. And this is your spinous process. And this from point to point is your vertebral arch. So same slide, be able to label that. Here's a sagittal view of the T-spine. Um, starting here, this is your body. You have your vertebral end plates, top and bottom, your superior costal facet with your pedicle and your superior articular process. Um, coming straight at us is your transverse process with your spinous process um, heading south here. This looks like um, so with the spinous process coming down, you have your inferior articular process with your inferior vertebral notch. Down here is your inferior costal facet. So you have superior and inferior costal facets. Okay, this is an MRI T1, sagittal T1. We have your inferior vertebral notch, your superior vertebral notch, uh, your intervertebral foramen, and your spinous processes in the back, and you have your disc space with the body, and you have your superior articular uh, process there with your pedicle. You can see a piece of your pedicle there. With your T-spine, um, this is a good animation for your intervertebral foramen with your inferior articular process with your superior articular process, so the inferior and superior and your zygapophyseal joints, and you have your facets with your demi-facets on your vertebral bodies. This is an oblique CT um, of the C-spine, so um, looking at it, they're, they're coming at it at an angle, so this is not a true uh, sagittal plane. We do this when we're looking for any kind of degenerative disease. We'll do obliques just like this one, so here is C1. Here is C2 with your den sticking up. You have your inferior articular process with your superior articular process with your zygopophyseal joint in between your intervertebral foramen. Foramen, this is C6, 5, 4, 3, and 2. This is an axial uh, MRI axial T1 and of the lumbar spine. You can see the annulus fibers of your disc with your nucleus in the middle. You have your superior articular process with your inferior articular process with your spinal, um, your spinous process, sorry. So this is a CT myelogram, and you have your annulus fibers with your nucleus, and that's your disc, and you can see the contrast in the CSF, and um, we know we're down into the L-spine with the cauda equana. So superior articular process with your inferior articular process, so your spinous process. And we have also your apophyseal joints and your ganglion, dorsal ganglion root is that white dot there. 
So this is your disc, this is the diagram here. So that your annulus fibers um, run on the outside with your nucleus pulsa there. Uh, your cauda equina, which means we're down below um, where the uh, nerves are in the cord. You see your epidural space with your bone. Um, the cauda equina is just the nerves free floating within the CSF. Coming out, you have your nerve root. Um, and any kind of impingement is what you feel as the shooting pains down, down your legs. So sagittal T2L spine, uh, you can see your cord coming down and you can see right where your spinal cord ends and then this is your cauda equina, it means horsehair. So um, you can see here's T12, L1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then you go into your sacrum. And here is your disc and the black part is your annulus fibers. Okay, so this is um, C1. This is your atlas. So you have your anterior arch with your posterior arch. You have your transverse process with your transverse foramen within it. And you have your superior articular process up top. And your lateral mass between the uh, transverse uh, foramen and your superior articular process is your lateral mass. So here is a CT. You can see your anterior and posterior arch, and then your lateral mass is bigger here and with your transverse um, process or frame in there. This is an MRI, and this is your odontoid and your lateral mass of C1. So here's C2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and you have to get through uh, C7, T1, just like on an x-ray. So we have to do the same thing when we're working in CT and MRI. You still need to get down to C7, T1 disc space. So you can see the disc in here. This is a great shot of the vertebral artery um, running through the vertebral frame. And you can see the um, transverse uh, process there. Here's your axis, so your dontoid or your dens up top, and you have your superior articular process with your body, and you have your inferior articular process on the bottom with your transverse process coming out to the side. So this is a CT of um, C12. We do this if we're concerned. Um, we did this a lot when I worked at Hogue, as um, people would hit the sandbar and would fracture um, one or two or three. So we do cone down just like this. So a dontoid process. Um, now the scanners are so fast that we can do the whole spine just real quick and high resolution. So here's your C1 uh, lateral masses. Here's C2 and C3. You can see your transverse process there. Okay, so this is a sagittal view uh, CT. So this is your anterior arch of C1 and this is your um, C2 with your odontoid coming up. Here's posterior arch of C1 and spinous process of C2. This is your occipital bone coming down. So this is a reformatted image. Looking here, we have C1 and C2 where it fits together. This kind of just gives you an idea how it all comes together. And a sagittal view of C2, so you can see the part sticks up, is your dens. You have the superior articular process, your spinous process. You have your transverse process with your transverse foramen, and then your ar ar inferior articular process with your superior articular process. And this is C3 through C7. The bodies are, the, the structure is the same. So you have your body, you have your transverse foramen with your pedicle. And you have a superior articular process with your lamina, with your bifid uh, spinous process. So here is your body and your foramina, and you have your spinous process. This is bifid, bi means two, and your lamina. And the body of C7 with your transverse foramen, just a piece of it there with your transverse process and your spinous process. This is an MRI. This is a T2, believe it or not. So this is your posterior arch of C2. When we count, I know you guys are used to counting posteriorly. We don't count posteriorly. We count the body. So um, C2 is very distinctive as it has the dens on it. So we always count uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we've got through T10. So coming down, you have your posterior thecal sac and your spinal cord, and 
here is your spinous process of C7. See how we can't see it well? That's why we count the bodies when we're working in uh, CT and MRI. It's a safer way to count. And you have your uh, cerebral spinal fluid and your subarachnoid space. So the fluid is bright and your cord is dark. This is a CT Milo. So your uh, contrast is injected into the CSF. So your spinal cord is not going to have any CSF in it. So the contrast will be in CSF, not in the cord. So you have C1. So here is C2. You can tell it's kind of got that um, seal nose to it is what we call. I don't like that little line right there. That little line makes me a little nervous. So here's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And here's T1. So they got exactly uh, the minimum. Uh, there, so you can see your spinous process of two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So hard to count, and we shouldn't be clipping that posterior piece off. So um, here is your T spine vertebral body, and you have your costo vertebral joint and your rib, and you have your costo transverse joint on the back side. So with your transverse process, so uh, costo transverse and uh, costo vertebral. It's by the vertebral body. So that's how I remember the two different joints. You have your uh, spinous process there. So looking here, this is your costo, costo vertebral joint with your costo uh, transverse joint. This is your transverse process with your spinous process and your lamina and your rib coming across. This is your pedicle and your body. This is a CT 3D reconstruction, so L1, uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can count 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's usually how I do it. If I can't tell if there's a transitional vertebral body, I will look for ribs as my uh, stationary. So you see the sacrum here and the sacral foramina, or the openings where nerves come out. So this is a sagittal view of the lumbar spine. Uh, here's your body. You have your superior uh, vertebral notch with your pedicle, your superior articular process with your transverse process, your lamina, your spinous process, your inferior articular process, and your inferior vertebral notch. Here's a CT axial. So you have the body of L2. And you can know that because if you count on the little display, you can see that you're at L2. So you have your body, you have your pedicle, your transverse process with your lamina, and your spinous process there. So this is CT myelogram. We know that because it looks like an x-ray, but yet it has contrast in the CSF. And you know that you're down into your lumbar spine as the nerves are just free-floating. It's not in the cord. So this is your cauda equina down, down low. So here's your body, your pedicle, your transverse process, your lamina, your spinous process. Here is a sagittal T2 lumbar. So um, when we count, we go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 12, 11. So you can see here is your conus medullaris is where the actual um, spinal cord ends and then it goes into your cauda equina down below. Like I said, it's called um, cauda equina, I guess, translates into horse's hair. So it just kind of free floats within the, um, within the CSF. So you have your annulus, uh, annulus fibers here and your nucleus. And we're looking at the anterior longitudinal ligament. So there's a ligament that runs anterior and there's a ligament that runs posterior to the vertebral body. So your sacrum coccyx, you have your ala or your lateral mass, your first segment and your foramina. And you count one, two, three, four, and five. And then you have between three and five coccyx. So this is a CT of the sacrum, and um, you have your sacral prominence, and here's your ilium, your sacral iliac joint, and this is just your sacrum with the bodies here in the middle, and this is your sacral foramina. So this is angled to the sacrum so that we can lay it out in one plane. This is the MRI T1 of the sacrum. That's sagittal, so sacral predominant prominence. Here's S1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can see, and then um, this person has three that we can see here of the coccyx. So this is CT of the sacrum. So we have the body, sacral prominence, and um, the articular process, and this is your lateral mass with your SI joint. And I'm going to stop there. We'll pick up on the next um, video at this point.